Okay guys, we are gonna make the crispiest golden chicken schnitzels. There's a few little tips and tricks here to get it just right. So cute. <laughs> Am I like the only person in the world that would describe a schnitzel as cute? I don't know. <laughs> this is my very best chicken schnitzel. Okay, so there are not very many more joyous things, well, in my book anyway, than a very light, super crispy chicken schnitzel. And this one is my family's favorite version. It's a very simple version, but we're gonna get every element just perfect. Uh, now, we're gonna start off with the chicken, first of all. Now, you've heard me say a million times, I'm a, a thigh and legs girl. For this one, I'm a breast girl. That just sounds really weird, but we're gonna go with it anyway. <laughs> now, what you wanna do with the chicken is, I mean, this is just too large and, and you know, kind of lumpy. What we need is a really thin, beautiful piece of chicken. So you wanna start here and cut through the thickest part first. And then once you're kind of getting towards the end, I like to like flip it open, just have a look and just keep sort of cutting through. And that way you're gonna get a really nice even piece. And now to make things even more flat and even, we wanna just cover with some baking paper and use a rolling pin or an empty wine bottle works as well actually. Uh, and then concentrate here on pounding the thicker parts of the chicken only. That way we're gonna even everything out. All right, so let's have a look here. And now that's exactly what we want. So each of these should be like thinner than your index finger uh, and really beautifully even. All right, so the next part here, really crucial, I think, to getting the very best chicken schnitzel, and that is some really aggressive seasoning. Uh, I wanna get in here with a lot of salt, and we're gonna like dry brine these. It's called dry brining because, you know, wet brine is where you put the chicken into like a brine solution, a liquid, but this one, we're gonna allow the salt to melt um, into the chicken itself. You wanna get both sides. So we need to let the salt do its thing here and I want it to work its magic on that chicken for at least 20 minutes. Don't skip this step guys. This is where the salt really absorbs into that chicken. So be patient. Okay, so while the chicken and salt is doing its thing, we're gonna work on our breadcrumbs. Now, panko breadcrumbs is what I love to use here. It's a Japanese style, really dry, really crispy. But the problem is that you can often get really uneven, um, big and small kind of pieces in the packet. So we wanna even that out. So just pour the breadcrumbs into a Ziploc bag. And again, you wanna go in with your trusty rolling pin or your wine bottle or olive oil bottle or whatever you have and just really kind of pound it out. A little bit of rolling works well here too. All right, now just take a look at how much finer we've got those crispy breadcrumbs. And then because I can never leave well enough alone, we're gonna add some Parmesan cheese here. Okay, now just give this a really good mix. All right, so we've got our breadcrumbs, we've got some flour. One last thing we need for our like little crumbing station that we're setting up here is some eggs. Now you just need to give those a whisk. All right, so let's have a look at our chicken. And if you look really closely here, you can see there's lots of like juicy, salty liquid here. And that's kind of like that brine situation that I was talking about. But what we wanna do here now is get rid of all of that moisture. So any kind of moisture that we have left on this chicken is going to like crinkle up and make our crumbing soggy and we definitely don't want that. So you want some paper towel here. All right, so while I'm getting rid of that moisture, I'm also kind of wiping off any of that excess salt because the salt's done its job now. So just wanna clean that up. All right, so the way this goes is we want to keep left hand, wet hand, dry hand, right hand. I know you guys hear me say that every time we do a crumbing. I should make t-shirts or something, I quite like that. 
yeah, I think it works. Anyway, uh, that's going to help you uh, eliminate a lot of mess and sticky fingers. So, left hand, wet hand grabs the chicken into the flour. Right hand puts the flour on the chicken. You really want to dust off any excess flour there. And then that goes into the egg. Left hand comes in, makes that egg happen. And then into our breadcrumbs. Now we want to give that crumbing like 10 minutes in the fridge at least to really set and firm up. And I want you to keep a hold of those leftover breadcrumbs as well. All right, so while chicken's resting in the fridge, I'm gonna make a really super quick coleslaw. This is like my go-to coleslaw. Uh, I've just got some Kewpie mayonnaise here. I'm gonna add, and that's a, a Japanese mayonnaise. Um, it's kind of like, it's got a really nice, tanginess and savouriness. Um, you can use whatever mayonnaise you prefer. Uh, and some lime juice. Now give that a mix. And then pour that onto some finely shredded cabbage. All right, so now we're at my favorite part of the recipe, you guys would know by now. We're gonna fry some chicken. So what I like to do here, just in case any kind of little moisture spots popped up on our chicken while it was in the fridge, I like to kind of get some of that extra breadcrumbs that we saved from earlier and just pat them onto the top here and that'll kind of soak up any wet spots. Now you want at least a centimetre of oil in your pan, get it nice and hot and drop one of those babies in. Now what I like to do here is just concentrate on the beautiful crispy golden exterior. Then I'm gonna put the schnitzel in the oven and that'll make sure it's cooked through. Now don't be afraid to flip here. You can flip as many times as you want. In fact, more the better because that way you're gonna get a more even golden color. Oh, look at that happiness in there in that pan, wow. That color, so glorious. Now that's looking pretty good to me. So I'm gonna pop this out onto a wire rack and now into the oven while I cook the rest of the schnitzels so it'll stay nice and warm, but also it'll make sure that our schnitzel is cooked through perfectly. And now just keep on with that chicken frying. Okay, so I mean, have a look here guys. Look at how beautiful and even and golden and crispy our little schnitzels are. Oh, so cute. <laughs> Am I like the only person in the world that would describe a schnitzel as cute? I don't know, but anyway, I love them. Uh, let's get this out onto a plate. All right, so a little bit of coleslaw. And then you can choose your own adventure with sauces here. I'm gonna go with a Japanese tonkatsu sauce today. And then for me, always a little wedge of lemon or lime. And there you go, guys. That is the very best chicken schnitzel I know how to make anyway. Uh, I hope you love it as much as I do, but let's just have a taste and make sure it's as good as usual. Squeeze of lime. Crunch. Some sauce. Do you know what's so good about that? Is that chicken is so juicy from that and so well seasoned from that beautiful dry brine that we did. Mm. And then the crispy crumbing and the parmesan and the crumb is so light and so crunchy. Ah, oh, it really is joyful, my friends. Just joyful. Yum.